Hey everyone, welcome to the ranking, and welcome to my, to my ranking of Andrew Davis's movies. Yes, Andrew Davis is a fantastic filmmaker. Well, he's pretty good. He's got a few crappy movies, but he's got some really amazing movies. He's directed some amazing action movies, but he's also made some pretty dreadful action movies and a couple of shitty horror movies. But yeah, he's got a mixed filmography, but I still, all in all, am a fan of Andrew Davis. And I thought I'd rank all of his movies from my least favorite to my favorite. He has 11 movies, so let's get to it. Here's my ranking of Andrew Davis's movies from my least favorite to my favorite. All right, coming at number 11 is Final Terror. If you have not seen this movie ever, good. Keep on skipping this movie because this movie is dreadful. This movie is awful. It lacks in scares, originality, good performances, good writing, smart, clever filmmaking, subtlety, atmosphere. It has none of that. It is a generic B-rated horror movie that has no scares or thrills. And it's just, it lacks, again, in originality and even in fear or terror and stuff. And I really could not stand this movie. The performances were beyond cheesy and over the top. And again, the, the ending barely made any sense and stuff. And I absolutely hated this movie. And this is absolutely the worst Andrew Davis movie. Coming number 10 is Code of Silence. Code of Silence stars Chuck Norris. Yes, Chuck Norris. I know uh, you shouldn't be mocking Chuck Norris because everyone thinks of Chuck Norris as like a god of all men. And Chuck Norris is badass. I can fully admit that the shit he can do is awesome. The way he can even do his action scenes is pretty cool. But I'm not a big Chuck Norris movie fan. I don't like a lot of Chuck Norris movies. And I know I'm in the minority of that because there's so many people that love Chuck Norris. They praise Chuck Norris. They make Chuck Norris jokes. Which is fine. Which is fine. Uh, him as a person and how he kicks ass is pretty cool. And yeah, I admire him for that and stuff. And even seeing him in Enter the Dragon is pretty cool. But... Him as an actor is not a very good actor and stuff, and his movies are very good, and Code of Silence is no exception of bad movies. It's not a good action movie. It doesn't even have really good action scenes. A few scenes with Chuck Norris are pretty cool, but the story isn't interesting. It's very cliched. It has a very silly villain, and again, a very silly and unoriginal story. It's not very interesting. It's not very action-packed. It's not very entertaining. It's just kind of boring dribble that we've seen a bajillion times in a bajillion other action movies, and yeah, not a fan of Code of Silence. Coming in number nine is Collateral Damage. Yes, Collateral Damage. I know it's with movies with Collateral, whether it's Collateral Beauty or Collateral Damage. I feel like the only movie that can pull off Collateral is Collateral with Tom Cruise. But yeah, Collateral Damage is one of the last few movies Arnold Schwarzenegger did before he became governor and stuff. And now he's returning form to movies now and stuff since he's not governor anymore. He's doing more movies now, but this is when he, like, stopped doing movies. This was in the early 2000s, and this movie's absolutely awful. Yeah, Schwarzenegger is trying to be fun, entertaining, show his Arnold one-liners, Arnold, I'll be back. None of those. None of those are in this movie. This movie is actually very, just kind of blah, kind of just, you know, boring, not very interesting, not very entertaining and stuff. Again, Andrew Davis, when he does bad movies, they're very generic, boring, forgettable movies that have been done to freaking death. Collateral Damage is a movie we've seen a bajillion times, and just, it's not very entertaining, it's not very fun to watch, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is a great action movie star, and it's pretty bad even when he's boring in the movie, so yeah, you know when you have a boring movie, when someone like Arnold is boring in it, so yeah, Collateral Damage, definitely not a good movie. Coming number eight is The Guardian. Yes, The Guardian stars Ashton Kutcher. Yes, Ashton Kutcher. And Kevin Costner. And it's about Coast Guards. Yes, basically it's about these guys that save people and stuff. People will get lost or trapped at sea or their boat crashes. They send the Coast Guards in there to save them and stuff. And yeah, it's basically about Kevin Costner. Basically, he was the only survivor of one mission he did and stuff. And he basically wants to retire, but then... Before he retires, he has to train all these recruits and stuff. One of them is Ashton Kutcher. He's this cocky son of a bitch. But then Kevin Costner takes him under his wing and stuff. And basically, by the ending of the movie, Ashton Kutcher needs to be saved. And Kevin Costner has to go out for one last mission. One last mission to save Ashton Kutcher and stuff. And yeah, that's the story of The Guardian. It sounds like an interesting story if it's well executed and well written and well acted. And yeah, that's the problem with this movie. It's an interesting premise that could be very good, very emotionally hard-hitting. And you got Kevin Costner, who's a great actor, 
but the movie's so clunky and just so uh, very sloppily handled. It's not very well done. It's not a very well crafted film. Ashton Kutcher is a dreadful actor. I don't have anything against Ashton Kutcher, but I don't think he's a very good actor, and he was the wrong choice to play the role, his role. They should have got someone like Mark Wahlberg or something to play the role of Ashton Kutcher's part. Kevin Costner does try, but again, he's not directed properly. He has a lot of very bland moments. It's just, I don't feel the emotional connection. You're supposed to feel his connection to Kevin Costner's character. You're supposed to feel his pain and stuff, and you don't feel that. And Kevin Costner's a great actor. Just, again, Andrew Davis, Andrew Davis just didn't direct him properly and stuff. And even all the saving scenes, the Coast Guard scenes, aren't very interesting. They're not very exciting. They're not very uplifting or entertaining and stuff. And the ending to this movie is so predictable. I saw it coming a mile away, and again, it wasn't sad, and it should have been sad, but again, because we're not connected to these characters, and we're not connected to the situations they're going through, and that's just all thanks to bad writing and bad direction stuff, and yeah, the ending is supposed to feel sad, but honestly, I could care less. I could care less about these characters. I could care less about the story, and that is just thanks to bad direction and bad writing and horrible execution, and it's just not crafted properly, not acted properly, and just... The, and the premise alone could have worked. It just, you needed a better cast. And maybe Andrew Davis just wasn't right for this. Wasn't right to direct this movie. So yeah, The Guardian had potential, but it's not a good movie. Coming to number seven is Chain Reaction. Yes, everyone's thinking, you put this movie over The Guardian. Yes, this is a silly, stupid action movie. Again, about water. It's about a flood and stuff. And you got Keanu Reeves and you got Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. And Keanu Reeves. Whoa, dude. Uh, this movie is not good. It's really stupid. It's very silly. It's very over the top. Keanu Reeves is there. Morgan Freeman's great because it's Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman is great in everything he does, and he's awesome. Some of the scenarios are pretty entertaining to watch, but it is a very dumb, silly movie. But at least it's entertaining in some elements of the film. The Guardian was supposed to be this powerful, dramatic film with all these emotional, hard-hitting scenes, and it failed at that. And it failed horribly at all those things. This movie is just meant to be a silly, dumb, you know, uh, disaster movie. And it kind of succeeds at that. It's not a good movie. This movie is not good. It's not well acted. It, they would never get nominated for Academy Awards or anything. But it is a B-rated disaster movie that you can have some dumb fun with. It's not a good movie, but it's kind of stupidly fun. Coming number six is Above the Law. Yes, Above the Law. I am the law. Yeah, <laughs> that's dread. I am the law. This is a Steven Seagal movie. I am not a Steven Seagal fan. Like, uh, people have asked me, like, do a top ten or ranking of Steven Seagal's movies. I haven't watched all his movies. I've seen a few of them. I've seen, like, Half Past Dead, Exit Wounds, Fire Down Below, uh, another one you're about to see coming up on this list, and I've seen Above the Law and stuff. I am not a Steven Seagal fan. I've also seen Machete. Like, he's in that, too. Ugh. I don't think Steven Seagal's a very good actor. I don't think he's a very fun action movie star. He's not, like... See, Stallone is actually a good actor. So is Bruce Willis and stuff. And Keanu Reeves can be a very good actor. Schwarzenegger's not a good actor, but at least he's fun to watch. He has this charm and this, you know, this weirdness about Schwarzenegger that makes it fun and entertaining to watch him. I don't find uh, Steven Seagal or a Jean-Claude Van Damme very entertaining or very fun. And Above the Law is for Steven Seagal fans. There is some funness if you love Steven Seagal movies. This is strictly for Seagal fans. There is some okay action. There is some cool ideas in the movie. But again, I'm not a Steven Seagal fan. There's only one movie I actually genuinely like of his, and Above the Law is not one of them. Yeah, you got like a Sharon Stone and stuff in this movie, but again, this movie is just strictly for Steven Seagal fans. And if you're a Steven Seagal fan, definitely you will love this movie. But if you're not... You can take it or leave it. Coming to number five is A Perfect Murder. Yes, A Perfect Murder is a remake of Dial M for Murder. A much better Hitchcock movie. A very good movie. This one isn't too bad. It follows the formula, but also being very, very different. It has Michael Douglas, Gwyneth Paltrow, Viggo Mortensen in the three lead roles and stuff. And how they changed the scenario is really clever and stuff. It's definitely not as, as intense or as atmospheric as Dial M for Murder, but... It's still a pretty okay, decent, dramatic thriller, and I do like it. I like Michael Douglas in the movie, and I like how the movie ends and stuff, and yeah, it's just a pretty entertaining thriller. It's no Fatal Attraction or Dial M for Murder, but it's still a pretty entertaining thriller. 
Coming number four is Under Siege. Yes, Under Siege is the only Steven Seagal movie I like. It's not even really because of him. He's fine in it. He does have a few okay, cool action scenes, but... All in all, I like this movie because of the premise. I like the idea of these terrorists taking over the submarine. I love Gary Busey and Tommy Lee Jones as the villains. They're so deliciously over the top and they're so great and so fun. There's a cool, a few cool action scenes and there is this claustrophobic feel because they're on this boat and stuff taken over by terrorists and stuff. And yeah, I like this movie. It's a fun, entertaining action movie. I don't love it, but I do enjoy it. Coming number three is Holes. Yes, Holes is a very different movie from Andrew Davis, and it actually works. This is a live-action Disney movie starring Shia LaBeouf, Sigourney Weaver, and John Voight. It's basically about this camp. Instead of going to juvie, you can go to this camp and stuff, and in this camp, you dig holes. You dig holes for the ward and stuff, and you dig holes to find this treasure she's been finding and stuff, and yeah. Shia LaBeouf is a kid that committed a crime that he actually did not commit, and instead of going to juvie, he goes to this camp called Camp Greenleaf or something, and where he meets all these kids and stuff. He meets his best buddy, Zero, awesome character and stuff, and yeah, basically, he has to dig these holes for the warden and stuff, and yeah, he finds out about the history of this land and stuff, and the history of his ancestors and how it connects to this land and all that stuff, and it's it's kind of like a prison movie, but also like a survival movie, and I really like this movie. Holes is a very good movie. It has some very dark elements in it for a Disney movie, and Shia LaBeouf is actually really good, and I love uh, John Voight as one of the guards. I love Sigourney Weaver in the movie. Even Henry Winkler, the Fonz, A hey, is good in the movie, and yeah, it's all around a great film, and a great kid, it's a great family movie, you know, it's pretty dark at times, but it's still a very engaging, entertaining movie, you get connected with the characters and the story, and yeah, Holes, very good movie. Coming number two is The Package, yes, The Package was a movie I just saw recently, I'd never even heard of this movie, and I'm like, what the frig is The Package? It's like this 90s action movie with Gene Hackman and Tommy Lee Jones, it's like this Russian spy movie, but assassination and stuff, and I, I was really engaged by this movie, I really freaking loved this movie. I loved Gene Hackman, I loved Tommy Lee Jones, I loved the whole cast in this movie, I had John Hurd in the movie, I loved the climax of this movie, I loved the action. I love the fucking one-liners. The one-liners in this movie are freaking hilarious. And yeah, I I just thought this movie was great. If you love cool action espionage movies, then definitely check this movie out. It is very underrated, very overlooked, and yeah, I guarantee if you love spy action movies, you will love this one. And my number one favorite Andrew Davis movie is, of course, The Fugitive. Yes, of course. And this is probably everyone's favorite Andrew Davis movie. It's The Fucking Fugitive. Harrison Ford, Tommy Lee Jones, kill it in this movie. This is what one Tommy Lee Jones' Academy Award. He's amazing. I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. I love this movie. It's based off an old TV show about Dr. Richard Kimball who basically gets put away for murder for murdering his wife, and he did not. He said a one-armed man did it, and no one believes him. And basically, the bus that's taking him to prison crashes and stuff, and basically he escapes, and he's on the move, he's a fugitive, looking for the man who murdered his wife. And then you got Tom Lee Jones, a U.S. Marshal, and his entire team, which consists of Joe Pantolano and stuff, and basically they're out to catch Richard Campbell, but also find out the real truth of what happened that night of his wife's murder and stuff, and this is a great action thriller with fantastic performances, amazing performances, amazing action scenes, and very intense thrills. I love this movie. I absolutely adore it. It's one of my favorite performances by Harrison Ford, and Harrison Ford's one of my favorite actors. I love Tom Lee Jones in this movie. I love how this movie is executed and structured. I freaking love it. Everything about The Fugitive is absolutely amazing, and it's hands down the best movie Andrew Davis has directed. So yeah, that was my ranking of all of Andrew Davis's movies, from my least favorite to my favorite. So in the comment section below, please tell me, what is your ranking of all of Andrew Davis's movies, from your least favorite to your favorite? Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to his channel, and join the dark side.